I'm Sweet Paul and I'm the editor-in-chief of Sweet Paul magazine. I'm inspired by unique and beautiful things. I was raised by two little old ladies, my grandmother and my great aunt. Those were two amazing ladies because they, from a very early age, just found out that, you know, I was a little different. I loved cooking and crafting, so they would do that with me all day. About five years ago, I came up with the idea that I want to start my own magazine. So I started very small in the beginning, just online, and it just grew and grew and grew, and it's something I'm actually really proud of. So I love going to flea markets, and one of the things that I always look for is old pie tins, because they have such a beautiful patina on them. I, I just love them. I'm gonna use them to create some photo frames. You know, we all have that shoebox, old pictures that we need to use for something, and this is a very good project. So you're gonna need some acrylic craft paint. This is great, it comes in a range of colors, you know, metallics, neon, and it dries really fast. You're gonna need a brush. You're gonna need a pen, some white paper, scissors, a hot glue gun, and of course your pie tins. So, I painted the pie tin, painted it blue, and I'm gonna make a template. So I'll put the tin on top of some white paper, and then I'm just gonna trace around the bottom of the tin like this, all the way around. So I painted this with some acrylic paint. It takes about two coats, and uh, you know, each, each coat dries in like 15 minutes, so it's actually really fast. So when you're cutting out your templates, make sure to cut it a little bit smaller than what you've drawn, because remember the inside of the tin is actually a little bit smaller. So I'm cutting it out like this. And this is a great project, you know, to use. You can use them in your kid's room, you can use them in the kitchen, like all over the house. And if you get tired of the images, you can always switch them out for something else. So like this. And I'm just gonna see if it fits. Fits perfectly. Okay, so I'm gonna take my picture and this is old Uncle Charlie and Auntie Miriam. So I'm gonna put it on top of the image like this. And then I'm gonna cut out. Just like that. Cut all the way around. And you know, this would actually make a really fun gift for someone. You know, a little hostess gift, or if you're going to a birthday party, make a little pie tin with their picture in it. So, I have the picture. I'll put it inside, and then I'm gonna use my trusted old glue gun. The one that I bought 10 years ago when I first moved to America. I actually love it so much, and I love crafting so much that I actually got a tattoo a few years ago on my arm of the same glue gun. I mean, talk about serious crafter. And I'm just gonna put some glue on it, on the back, just like this. And then I'm gonna glue the image down and here we go. Isn't that cute? And it just takes, you know, a few seconds to dry. So here I made one with an old, um, what is this, an old wedding photo. Here's one, an old group photo of my family. Um, this is handsome Uncle Charlie. It's about time he got on the wall. I'm gonna hot glue him as well. And then there you go, Uncle Charlie. And then they're ready to go on the wall. So here we have Uncle Charlie, and this is an old group photo of my family. And you know, you can uh, cluster them on the wall, make like a little gallery wall in different colors, or if you wanna do like all white or maybe all natural. And they make a great gift. You know, if you have a party you wanna go to, uh, frame a picture of them and give them away. It's a really fun little project. I love making lamps. I don't know why, but I just, I just love it. And I think it's 
it's so much fun to take something as plain as a bunt pan, give it a little color, you know, add a few elements, and then you have a really truly unique lamp. And it's actually quite easy to do. So what you need for the lamp is uh, you're going to need some paint. And I use acrylic paint again. I'm going to paint my tin with two coats and let it dry about an hour between each coat. Um, brush, of course, to paint it with. So I'm going to use this, um, this great electrical cord. It's regular cord, but it's covered in this beautiful fabric. And you can buy it in any store that sells, you know, lamp supplies. I'm going to use a plastic plug, and what this plug does is that it keeps the cord in place. A socket, metal socket, and of course a plug. And for this project I'm using a bunt pan that I painted in this amazing turquoise color using the acrylic paint. So you need a pair of regular scissors, a screwdriver, and uh, light bulbs, of course, and I have chosen these beautiful uh, Edison light bulbs. It reminds me of my grandmother, and you can get them in, in, you know, most hardware stores or electrical stores would have them. You take your little plug here, and you're going to insert that on your cord at one end. You just need to push it through, it's a little hard. Ugh. Here it comes, here it comes. Just like that. And you actually have to run that through the whole cord because you need this end to be at the end of your cord. So all the way like this. And then you need to put the top of the little plug through the same cord, do the same thing. So this little plug will actually, will actually hold your lamp up. The length of the cord, you know, it, it's up to you. What you should do before you start this project is to figure out where you want the lamp to hang and measure it so we don't have to, so we don't buy like too much cord or too little cord. So what you do now is you twist this open a little bit, the cord has two parts. I'm gonna push down the fabric a little bit <clears throat> I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm just going to gently twist the scissors around the plastic part of the cord. I don't want to cut through. Just a few times like this. Because what I want is I want to get to the metal. Because they are thin. There we go. See here the thin, the thin metal wires underneath the cord. I'm going to twist the metal wires like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And you know, if you, if you do it a little too rough and you cut the cord, you just, you know, push the, push the little plug back and then you start all over again. It's no big deal. You remember the whole perfection is boring? Exactly. <clears throat> okay, let's see. There we go. Twist it again. So I'm going to take the top of the socket. I'm going to put that into the cord like this. Like that. Then I'm going to take the socket part. You see it's two screws on each side. So I'm going to twist the metal around the screws like this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my little screwdriver and I'm going to tighten the screw around the metal like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You unscrew the screw a little bit. Then I'm going to twist the metal around the screw and screw the screw in place. 
There we go. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to add the end of the socket. Just like that. I'm going to put the cap back on. You hear a little snap when it's back on. And then I'm going to move this down, the little cord, and I'm going to screw my little plug into place. Like that. And then I'm taking the end of the plug and screwing that in place. So now, you know, this is not going to come apart. So that's the reason why we have this little plug, is to keep everything in place. Because you don't want to sit and have dinner, and then all of a sudden the lamps fall on your head, or worse, like in your soup. So, what I'm going to do now, plug, bump pan. This is kind of the fun part. Because now we see everything comes together. Look at the colors. Oh, love this. I'm going to push this into the pan. Voila. You have a really cool little lamp. So, now I'm going to put the plug on. So, what I'm doing now is the same thing as I did with the socket. I'm going to take my scissors. Pull off the plastic, twist them around a little. Same on the other side. Pull it off, twist it around. The last one is actually a little long, so I'm going to trim this one a little bit, like that. Need to put this wire. There we go. So this is my plug. I'm taking it apart. You are going to put the cord. He puts the cord around the screw. Just like that. And then we screw it tightly together. Same thing on the other side. Screw it in place. Okay, I have a lot of little fabric strips. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut those off. And then I'm gonna put the top of the socket back on. Voila! So I'm gonna put my bulb in. I'll screw that in, and now comes the like really fun part, or nerve-wracking part. All you know, all depends which way you look at it. Let's see if it works. You know, here it goes. Here goes nothing. Let's see. Let's see. How cool is that? I mean, this will look amazing in anyone's home, but you know something? This one is going over my dinner table. A fun idea to use old pie tins is to make a cake stand. I mean, let's face it, everyone loves cake, right? At least I do. So I'm gonna use some candlesticks, and these are actually, um, these are metal, and I found them at the craft store, but you know, you can find them in dollar stores, flea markets, um, everywhere. Maybe you have some old ones you can use as well. You need a pie tin, and this one has a flat bottom, and then it has a little scalloped edge. So when I put it on top of here, it looks really pretty. Um, super glue, you would think I would use a hot glue gun, but the hot glue isn't gonna be strong enough. So super glue is super strong. It's gonna keep everything in place. 
a mask, spray paint, and a cardboard box. So what you do is that you take your candlestick, you take some super glue, and I put some gloves on just in case I get super glue on myself. I don't want to glue myself to my hair or something, you know. And then I'm just simply going to add glue all the way around the edge. Don't put too much on because then it just starts dripping on like all over the place. Just like this. This should be fine. And then I'm going to take my tin and turn it upside down. And I'm simply going to place it on top of the candlestick like this. And then I just have to look and make sure that it kind of looks like it's on in the middle. So I'm going to twist it around to see. And I have to do this kind of fast because, you know, it's super glue, so it glues really fast. But I think this looks good. Okay. So, you're going to leave this to dry for a little bit. Now, I am going to move this over to the side here. I'm going to take my box. So it's a regular cardboard box. I'm going to use spray paint for this because it gives it such a nice smooth surface. Uh, I'm actually using glossy paint because that's kind of trendy right now to have glossy things. So I'm using glossy yellow paint. I'm going to put the cake stand inside the box like this. And the secret is now when you start spray painting, you don't get paint everywhere. I'm going to put on my mask. It's not going to be very flattering, but I'm still going to do it. Okay. Okay, looks good, right? So, you're going to get your paint ready. Shake it up a little bit. You can put it on Taylor Swift, shake it up and shake it. Okay, and now comes the fun part. Now I'm going to paint. Ooh, look at this beautiful color. Ooh, that's nice. So my cake stand has been drying now for several hours. So let's see if it's, let's see if it's done. Oh yeah, this is dry. Let's have a look. Ta-da! Wow, I love the color. So this cake stand is ready for cake and so am I. I don't know about you guys, but I am getting old and a little forgetful. Don't tell anyone. Um, so I need to write down stuff. And the perfect way for me to do it is to do it on a chalkboard. And uh, we're going to make our own. You know, I went to the store and I looked at some chalkboards. And you know, they're actually really expensive. So I was thinking, if I can take something I have and turn it into a cool chalkboard, that's perfect. So I'm going to use an old pie tin, of course. And then I'm going to use chalk paint. And you know, they come actually in a range of colors. It's not just black anymore. It's like the colors of the rainbow. So you need that, you need a brush, you need chalk of course, and then we're gonna use these commando strips to put them on the wall. So I'm gonna to start to paint my, my pie tin. So I'm gonna use, start, I'm gonna use green today. I think that's kind of cool. So I'm just gonna paint, make sure you get it all to the edge. So I'm using a 9 inch pan, but you can use whatever you want if you want to, you know, if you can find some bigger ones, that's cool, smaller ones, that's fine too. Um, you will need about two coats of this paint, and it dries actually quite fast, but I would leave them for like an hour to dry before you put on the next coat. This one is almost done. OK. 
Okay, so this is done. So this is gonna need two coats. I would leave this, it dries kind of quickly, but I would leave this for like an hour to dry so that it's completely dry before you put another coat on. But of course I have cheated, so I have one ready. I made a red one, which I think is really cool. So I'm gonna go shopping later, so I need to write down what I need. So I need, I need milk, I need olive oil, and I need bread. You know, that's what I don't forget. I'm gonna use the commando, the commando strip, this is the wall side. So I'm just gonna put that on the back of here, and I'm gonna put it on the wall. You know, it's a, it's a perfect craft project. Growing up in Norway, um, candles are really important. You know, our whole like winter months are super dark, so candles, you know, makes your house flicker and everything turns like magical. And I love making candles in these little pie tins. And I love especially these ones because my grandmother used to make something called sandkake, which translated is kind of like, like sand cookies, but they were super delicious. And they were made of little tins like this. So I'm kind of, creating her cookies but in a candle form. So for this project we're going to use some small pie tins, we're going to use uh, some soy wax and you can get that at uh, craft stores or online. Wicks, some essential oils, that's again craft stores, online, a small saucepan, some tacky glue and of course a hot pan or a stove. So I'm going to get my candles started and what I'll do is I'm going to put the saucepan on, medium heat, not too warm, I'm going to pour in my wax, like that, and then I'm going to take some essential oils. So what shall I use? I think I'll use the love spell. What about that? Okay, just a little bit. You don't want too much love. And then while that is melting, I'm going to take my, my wick and I'm going to glue it to the bottom of the cake pan, just using a little bit of tacky glue, like this. You let that sit for a couple of minutes and then oh the wax is done so I'm gonna take the wax and I'm gonna pour it into my beaker like that and I do that because it's gonna be much easier to pour the wax from the beaker and now a little tip because when you when you pour the, the hot wax in, the wick will start to sort of wiggle a little bit. So I'm going to place my, you can use anything, but I'm going to place my, my glue bottle next to the little tin. And I'm going to let the wick rest on the glue bottle until it sets. And this wax will set in like 10, 12 minutes. So I'm going to pour it into my little tin, almost all the way to the edge. That's good. So now that the wax has set, I'm going to trim my wick. And I trim them to like an inch. And then just before you burn them, you can trim them down a little more if you want to. There we go. And here are the finished results. Look at them, aren't they cute? These will look great on your, your dinner table, a little side table, outside in your garden. They're awesome as a little hostess gift or, you know, a stocking stuffer, anything like that. I think it's such a cute little project. So now it's time to put these on the table. 